Good evening. This is Emmanuel Baptist Church, Pastor Ben Birch, and this is Sunday evening. And uh, this message is going to could be from the kitchen table still. Uh, this morning, we started back in church. And just what a privilege that that is. It feels so good to be back in the building, uh, to be back behind the pulpit. Uh, and I've mentioned before, just so odd, uh, preaching sitting down. Uh, rather than standing up. I had, I had done that for 32 years. And so then to come back and have to preach from a kitchen table to an empty uh, kitchen and, uh, and living room, dining room area, uh, just again, been, been very unusual for me to do that. But it is good to have been back in the church uh, this morning. And uh, so we just look forward to continue expanding and opening the church. And, and let me just give you a quick rundown on some of those things. Uh, again, this Sunday, we had Sunday morning, the 11 o'clock service. Uh, next Sunday, we will do the same. We'll have the 11 o'clock service only, but then we will also have Wednesday night service at the church, uh, and that is a week from this coming Wednesday. And then the Sunday after that, uh, then we want to go ahead and have Sunday morning service, Sunday evening service, and Wednesday night service that week as we just slowly move back into a normal church service. And so we're looking forward to that as this continues to unfold. We will continue uh, putting uh, all that information out there uh, so that you'll have a heads up as to exactly what we're doing week to week. But again, good to be with you tonight. And take your Bibles, if you would, go ahead and open to the book of John. We're going to begin in John chapter 10. Uh, the message tonight is Bible assurance. And just exactly what, what does that mean and why, uh, again, does that give us such peace? And so we want to look here and just start with a couple of things. And here in John chapter 10, and beginning in verse 27 of chapter 10, it tells us there, My sheep hear my voice, I know them and they follow me. And of course, this is Jesus Christ speaking. It says, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. One of the reasons that we have absolute assurance is the very words of Jesus Christ. Number one, he says, if we're his sheep, we're going to follow him. And so Jesus Christ, again, is going to be the one that we are seeking after. We're going to follow him. And the idea, too, of following, it doesn't, doesn't just mean we trail along, but we follow him in obedience. Uh, we, we follow in doing those things that Jesus Christ would have us to do. And so, again, we walk through. Uh, he says here, my sheep hear my voice. I know them. They follow me. And I give unto them eternal life. This is where our assurance lies. We have been given a present possession of eternal life. That's security. That's assurance. Let's also look at another verse concerning that, and that's Romans chapter 6. In Romans chapter 6, and I just want to look at a very, very familiar verse to most of you, but it's verse 23, 623. So it says, For the wages of sin is death. Those who refuse to receive Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior and die. The wages, what they have earned of their life of sin is death. Now there is physical death, the Bible teaches us, but there is also what the Bible teaches us, the second death. And so we die physically, but there's also a spiritual death. And that death and the idea of death in the Bible is separation. And so that second death is the eternal separation of us from God. And so, be, listen, be absent from the body, what is to be present with the Lord for all believers. But on the flip side, to be absent from the body is to be not present with the Lord for eternity. And again, out of his presence is into that very unfortunate but eternal place called hell. And so again, this, this verse uh, picks up and tells us very clearly, for the wages of sin is death. We live out a life of sin, rejecting Jesus Christ. We end up with eternal death, but 
the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. How do I get this assurance? How do I have this relationship? It's the gift of God. It is something that God has prepared for man as a gift for, for merely, again, what? Believing in Jesus Christ. Placing our faith in Jesus Christ. It is obedience to the plan of God for all mankind. God would that all men come to repentance, but all men do not come to repentance. And so, all those who do, we become the children of God. What a beautiful position that we have. And not only that, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. This is what we build our assurance on, is an eternal relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ. And so this idea, what is Bible assurance? Well, a definition or a simple definition would simply be the security that one's name is written down in heaven. I am absolutely secure in my position because it doesn't depend on me. It doesn't depend on performance. It depends on Jesus Christ and the power of his blood to atone my sin or cover my sin. And my relationship with God through that blood of Jesus Christ is eternal. It's given as a gift through Jesus Christ. We simply have to receive that gift. Now, this wonderful Bible assurance relationship. Let's just walk down through that quickly this evening. And the first thing I want you to look at is in Ephesians chapter 1. In Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 6, simply says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy and without blameless before him in love, having predestinated us under the adoption of of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of the glory of his grace wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved now we could spend several weeks on just simply those verses but that's not the point this evening the point this evening is my assurance how do I have this assurance I have it through that relationship in Jesus Christ I have it through that gift of salvation and having received this I have been adopted this wonderful word that we have here that we are in fact adopted he has predestinated us in verse 5 unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself we have been brought in to the very family of God. An adoption has, been, has taken place through our relationship with Jesus Christ. And so part of my assurance, and one of the wonderful things of my assurance, is I've been adopted. God is my eternal Father. I, I don't have to worry about other things. He is my Father. When we die, when we leave this body, I go home to be with God the Father. The unsaved, when they leave this body in death, they go home to be with their father, the devil, which Jesus Christ pointed out to those who rejected him when he walked this earth. And so the reality is when we die, we simply go home to be with dad. It's just who is your father? Who have you received as your father? And so this matter of the gift of salvation, it's a wonderful thing and plays directly into our assurance, the adoption of our relationship with God. We are now his children, blood-bought children. Secondly here, what I want you to take a look at is we have an unbelievable union with Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 6. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 
want to take a look at. I'm just going to kind of skip through some verses because I'm, I'm zeroing in on a specific thing. I don't want to get sidetracked. Uh, but here in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 15, it tells us here, Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them uh, members of a harlot? God forbid. Listen, don't take the body that belongs to God. We are children of God. Don't take that body which is in union with Jesus Christ and again, place it in union with sin. doesn't matter what that sin may be. Here they use this, the idea of harlots. But any sin that we take ourselves and we replace the relationship that we have with God by some other relationship. We're told, listen, don't do that. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ. We have a wonderful union with Jesus Christ. Also look down to verse 17. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. We have one body, one spirit, as we are joined with the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And not only that, but look at verse 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you? One of the things that every believer must absolutely realize is that union and relationship with the Holy Spirit that we now possess because of our salvation relationship with Jesus Christ. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God? But where did this come from? It came from God the Father, sharing with us God the Holy Spirit, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. Boy, this is something that, honestly, many people, many believers rebel against, that I'm not my own. We want to continue to make our own choices. I, we want to go our own way. And yet, we get into the Word of God, we begin to study the Word of God, and we find out, wait a minute, that is a direction of sin. That is a direction that God forbids. Yeah, but I want to please the flesh. I want to please myself. But we look at the Word of God and we say, wait a minute, the direction that I was headed... Uh, the ways that I was pleasing myself in this world, that's not the ways of God. And as a believer, I don't want to do that anymore. You say, well, how can I overcome that? Because you now have, what did it say? The indwelling Holy Spirit. He lives in you. You have the very power of the indwelling Holy Spirit living within your body. And so we have the power to do that. He that is in us, the Bible says, is greater than he that is in the world. The Holy Spirit that lives in us is greater than the devil himself. And so, yes, we can overcome those temptations, those sins, and those drawings, if you will. Verse 20 also here says, For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. But they belong to God. They are, we are a purchased possession of God. Jesus Christ paid the price with his own blood. And so now being a purchased possession, we belong to God, not ourselves. So even in this body as I walk this earth, I'm to be in subjection to the word of God and the leading of God in my life and not in subjection to the ways of the world and that which the word of God points out to be sin. And so we have this wonderful relationship of adoption, we have a further relationship because of that adoption. We have this wonderful relationship of union with Christ and not only Jesus Christ, but also the Holy Spirit who lives in us. Next, we also look at another wonderful thing that we have, and that's possession of eternal life. It is mine. Look back to the book of John, chapter 5. And in John chapter 5, verse 24, simply says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, and again, this is Christ speaking, Verily, verily, I say unto you, 
He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death into life. And so now we have a possession of eternal life. It belongs to me. And again, see what it says. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath present possession, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Listen, we have a possession, and that possession is given to us by God at the moment that we've believed in Jesus Christ. It is a present possession of eternal life. Also, look at 1 John chapter 5. And 1 John chapter 5. We're going to take a look there at verse 13 of chapter 5. And here John writes, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Okay, so what does he tell us here? He's writing, he's writing something not only to these people 2,000 years ago, but to all those throughout the ages, this is written to us. Because it wasn't just written by John, this was written by the Holy Spirit of God through John. And so once again, what does this tell us uh, as, as we look at, at verse 13? These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. Number one, this only applies to those who have already placed their faith in Jesus Christ. Doesn't apply to anybody else, applies to believers and believers only. That ye may know that ye have eternal life. You may absolutely realize your relationship with God. Ye have, ye possess eternal life. That ye may know that ye have eternal life and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Because of this relationship, because of this wonderful faith, that we now have in Jesus Christ, this goes on day after day after day that I know. I know, I don't hope so. I know so that I have this wonderful relationship with Jesus Christ. Listen, I'm adopted. I have union with Jesus Christ. I am in possession right now. It's not, I hope so in the by and by. It is the possession that I have right now of eternal life. It's mine. But it's only mine as I truly have believed on Jesus Christ. There are a lot of people who say, oh yeah, I believe in Jesus. Well, they believe that there's a historical person named Jesus, but they've never actually placed their faith in Jesus. They say, well, what's the difference? I don't understand. When one places their faith in Jesus Christ, it is absolute belief. Nothing held back. I believe. Where do we learn about Jesus Christ? Word of God. Then what am I saying I believe? I believe everything that the Word of God has to say about Jesus Christ. I believe the Old Testament prophecies of the coming Messiah of Israel. I believe in the New Testament as it begins to tell of the life of Jesus being born of a virgin and everything that went along with the life of Jesus Christ. Listen, this is a clear diary of truth surrounding Jesus Christ. When I say I believe, I believe it all. And so again, we have this faith, this belief, this trust in Jesus Christ. And so I have and I possess eternal life. The next thing we're going to take a look at is 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. And 1 Thessalonians, and we'll turn there to chapter 1. I want to take a beginning verse 2 of chapter 1. 
And it tells us here, we give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers. Well, you know, here Paul is writing to the Thessalonians. He wants them to know that they're on his mind all the time. And not only are they simply crossing his mind, he's praying for them. And now watch how this just unfolds as we walk down through several of these verses. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith. Boy, what, what are they doing? They not only had faith, saving faith in Jesus Christ, but they have a walk of faith day after day after day. Your work of faith. It wasn't just a one-time faith example. It was a continued daily walk and work of faith and labor of love. My, listen, you, you believed, you have working, and you love. Boy, listen, this has changed their hearts. This has changed their direction. And, and they truly now possess the ability to love others and to love God. Also, labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Waiting on the time when Jesus Christ is going to fulfill the promise of returning for all those who believe. He's gone to prepare a place for us. And when, when all of those things are ready in God's perfect time, Jesus Christ is going to return for the saints. And so again, he has patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. I am waiting patiently because I know that Jesus Christ is going to do exactly as he said. I know God is going to perform everything that he has promised. In the sight of God and, and our Father, these things are all coming to pass in the sight of God, knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of God. Boy, how, how does he know that all of these people, that, that they are going to be those who are going to experience what he is talking about here? Because they're the elect of God. And, and if you look that word up there, it means called. Knowing, brother and beloved, your election or your call of God. Listen, there is no salvation without a call. There is no salvation without the Holy Spirit of God convicting somebody about their need of salvation. And so there has to be the Holy Spirit must be involved. He must be involved in conviction. There must be a call of God. And again, that call is what? That we become part of the saints. And we respond to the call of God in our lives. Knowing brethren, uh, knowing brethren, beloved, your election of God, your call of God, for our gospel came not unto you in word only. The good news of Jesus Christ weren't just words spoken, but also in power in the Holy Ghost. We said the words, we told you the truth of Jesus Christ, we told you your need for salvation, but God, through the Holy Spirit, through the Holy Ghost, convicted your life. It came in power. The word is preached, the Holy Spirit takes that word, convicts the hearts and the minds of men. And in much assurance, boy, listen, what, what's that mean? It means as they listened to the word, as that reality came by the power of the Holy Ghost, began to bring them to a place of absolute assurance that what they're hearing is the truth. I want to tell you what, there's all kinds of different directions, uh, again, that, that I heard, especially once I was in high school and then out of high school, um, you started to hear about, oh, you know, there's no God. Um, and just many, many things that contradicted what I was taught as a child, and what I was taught in church. But yet, down the road, when I was 25 years old, I'm sitting in a church, and I'm sitting in a setting that I never intended to be in, by the way. And so here I am, but I'm listening to what the pastor has to say. And you know what? The light comes on. I believe what he has to say is the truth. I suddenly come to absolute assurance. And that assurance that this was the truth came through the power that, that is talking about here of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit got involved, and I came to that place 
of assurance. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance, as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. So listen, you watched us, you saw our way of life, you listened to the words that we spoke, you saw that we were completely dedicated to Jesus Christ, and you came to the place that you also believed in complete assurance that what you were believing was the absolute truth. And you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. You know, isn't that interesting? Almost an oxymoron. You received this in much affliction, but then it also says with joy of the Holy Ghost. That's what so many Christians have experienced over the years, that even in times of struggle and trial and problems, we're in a little bit of that right now, but even with that, we still have this wonder and joy of that relationship that we have with Jesus Christ. So, this matter. Number one, this salvation that I have, it's a gift. I, it's not something that I work for. It's not something that hinges on my performance. It is given to me by God. With this gift, I'm adopted. What an experience. What a wonderful thing that we have. With that, I have a union with Jesus Christ. I possess eternal life, and I know that my election is absolutely sure. And lastly, because of these things, adoption, union, possession, election, I have absolute peace as I walk this earth. Romans chapter 5. And Romans chapter 5, I want to take a look just at verses 1 and 2. It says, therefore, being justified by faith, just as if I'd never sinned, of course, it's been, it's been explained that way many, many times. And therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, the unmerited favor of God, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. My, when we stand back, especially as believers, and we get into the Word, and we begin to study the Word of God, and we see God for who He is, and what He has done, the, the unbelievable creative acts of God, He speaks and it is so, and how He has been on our side all the time. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God loves us. God loves you. God has been drawing all men to himself. God would that all men come to repentance. But again, verse 1, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Peace is something that so many of the religions of this world are seeking. Monks go off to far off places. Uh, there, are, there are people who are cloistered. They don't even speak one to another. And they're just quietly waiting. And, and they're meditating. And they're doing all kinds of different things. And when you say, what are you seeking? We're seeking peace. My friends, I don't, I don't seek peace. I have peace. I don't have to wait for it. I don't, I don't have to do any of the things that so many of the world religions do to try to have this feeling of peace in their lives. I already possess it. I already have it through Jesus Christ. My friends, Bible assurance, number one, our relationship with God through Jesus Christ is a gift. All we have to do is receive Believe and receive Jesus Christ. It is given to us, and then we are given to God in adoption. We are his children. We have a wonderful union with Jesus Christ, and also, it tells us, the Holy Spirit of God. We also have this possession 
of eternal life, I know that we're the elect. God has chosen those who believe. And again, we can go through a number of different passages, uh, but the idea here is one is not the elect unless one believes. And so we, we are those who have come to that place in our lives. We placed our faith in Jesus Christ. God is known before the foundations of the world, all who are elect, and it is God who has set up the election of all of those. And you can get off on all kinds of rabbit trails with that discussion, but it cannot be done without God setting it aside. It also cannot be done without man placing his faith in Jesus Christ. Wonderful, wonderful relationship we have with God and through these things adoption union possession and election we have peace listen this is Bible assurance it is absolute peace with God through his son Jesus Christ let's pray Heavenly Father God thank you for your word this time we've had together uh, thank you Heavenly Father just this this brief outline uh, so assuring uh, it brings true joy within to our lives to know that we have this possession and that this possession is eternal. It cannot be taken away. And so, God, thank you. We do pray if there are any listening this evening uh, who do not know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, they will seek this assurance through salvation, through his blood. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. And again, as we've just looked at these verses, talked about assurance, you may be listening to this uh, this evening and say, you know what, I don't have that assurance. I don't know if I were to die right now that I would go to heaven. Well, listen, you can know that. God loves you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. That's talking about you. You're the whosoever will. And you just need to simply come to that place and receive Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit will help you do that. The Word of God also says we confess with our mouths the Lord Jesus and believe in our hearts that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Number one, we believe absolutely without question in what the Word of God has to say, even to the raising of the dead, the miraculous about Jesus Christ. We recognize we're a sinner. We seek that God forgive us our sins. And we receive Jesus Christ. Repent, which means I change my mind about Jesus Christ. Repent and believe. Go before God. Tell him you're a sinner. Tell him you want salvation. Turn all these things over to him. And God will save you. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, God, I pray if there are any out there that do not know Jesus Christ, they see this need of assurance within their lives. Guide them, direct them, bring them, Heavenly Father, to that saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. It is that simple matter of belief. Believe what the Word of God has to say about Jesus Christ. And Heavenly Father, we'll thank you for it. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.